Till the tears run down from my eyes, Lord, somebody, ooh, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Alexa, play hits from Queen. Okay. Somebody to love. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Partners in Health and Biz with your host, Gail Dixon. Tune in every Saturday, 9 a.m. for great shows about obtaining and maintaining health, business, and finance. Learn from the experts here at PIHradio.net. And now, broadcasting from the Partners in Health and Biz studio, here's Gail. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning to you. Welcome to Partners in Health and Biz. I am so very happy you could join me today. This is a wonderful, special day, and we have a very special show planned for you. Yes, 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 in case you haven't been to the website, the title of today's show, What You Should Know About Healthy Aging. And this is a special show because my partner, Wendy Meyerhoff, will be joining me later in the show, and she will actually take over the second half of that that portion of our show. Today we have uh, a special show presented for you, again, by myself, Gail Dixon, and my partner and co-host and business anchor, Wendy Meyer off of WM Medical Communications. Again, our topic today is one that mostly everyone over the age of 29, I would, I would imagine, will be interested in, and that's healthy aging. I know at uh, usually at around 30, the age of 30, people start saying, oh, I'm getting old. Of course, we know 30 nowadays is very young. But I remember when I was younger, as soon as I was approaching 30, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm getting old. Then it was 35, and then I thought I was old. And then it was, you know, it just kept going on and on till now it's like age is just a number that we have to deal with. Age is a a process that we all, as long as we're living, we're aging. So we not, none of us stay still. We progress, and the thing, the show today, we want you to know about healthy aging. So we're going to jump right into the show, and we're going going to begin with food and nutrition. Of course, there's so many aspects of healthy aging, and we're going to, this morning, my portion of Partners in Health and Biz, the first, uh, the first 15 minutes, we're going to address and I'm going to attempt to address some of these issues, and they will be nutrition, the importance of stretching, menopause, and depression. So before we're going to discuss those topics this morning. So as we age, here are some of the concerns that we do have, and there are many And the concerns, the conditions, and diseases that often plague the aging community involved uh, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, depression, hearing loss, heart attacks, impotence, insomnia, menopause, osteoarthritis, prostate cancer, and prostate enlargement in men, aging skin, stroke, tooth loss, and loss of vision. Those are some of the main concerns that we have as we age. But of course, again, today we're going to address nutrition, menopause, insomnia, and depression, and stretching. So, beginning with nutrition, so many fruits and vegetables, <laughs> those little vegetables, they are something that we have to navigate. Through. Let us help you navigate the overwhelming bounty at the grocery store with a few no-stress rules. Okay, so some nutrition maximums are more flexible than others, and some fade or lose favor with changing trends and new research, but you're, you're never going to get out of eating your fruits and vegetables, and that's because a diet high in produ- produce offers a whole bunch of healthy benefits. We're not just talking about shake off the blah kind of perks. We mean years on your life once. Years. So consider this. The risk for premature death from any cause dropped by 10% from 1990 to 
for every 2.5 serving increases up to 10 total portions a day, according to researchers who examined 95 global studies. So what does this mean? Well, now exactly how much and what kind of all the healthy goodness you should be eating has been a bit more debated. Yes, we know. You'll hear some support for strict plant-only diets while others preach that fruits are full of sugar and should be avoided. And we've heard that. But there's there, and they are, there are some fruits that are more highly uh, filled with sugar, such as the bananas, the longer you let them sit and they get sweeter. So if you eat them right away, then that's better. So um, anyway, but there's no need to obsess over an extra celery stick here and there or a bunch of grapes there. Instead, know this. Know this. The biggest health gains come from increasing fruit and vegetable intake from zero up to five a day. So focus on getting there and think of the rest as extra credit. With our three simple rules, it'll be even easier to make a five a day goal a consistent reality. Wow. So what are some of those rules? Okay. First rule number one, chill out. If you're only hitting up the fruit aisles at the supermarket, you might be missing out. Blueberries in your overnight oats daily desk desk bait buffets of carrots way to nail those servings of fruits and vegetables so and the second rule is don't let them go to waste it's a lot harder to hit your five a day when you're consistently tossing out your options so here are the best advice from some common produce problems you can um, use your, your onions, those stinky onions. Yes, you can keep those. Sprouting potatoes, these are still good enough to eat if the sprouts are less than a, <laughs> a centimeter long. So excess leaves, slimy spinach on the turned avocados, and bendy uh, celery. You can eat all of those. Rule number three, watch the colors. A bright plate might make for the perfect Insta post, <laughs> but there's no hard evidence that always equals a balance in nutrients. So what you should know is different hued produce has varying effects on your risk of developing diseases. Cursiferous vegetables like cauliflower, yes, beige and white, even though they're, not, they're basically color, colorless, have been linked to reduce odds of cancer. So you do want to have your plate full of color, but make sure those colors are beneficial. While citrus fruits and carrots can protect against heart disease, rather than stressing about the palate you're creating in your grocery basket, simply focus on choosing at least three different shades and varieties a day, such as a green apple, a red, uh, red pepper, a serving of butternut squash, and you'll get a range of beneficial compounds. So that's the portion of our nutrition. <laughs> so you know nutrition is so very important in terms of healthy aging. So we're going to – I have no idea, <laughs> my, my business partner. We are broadcasting live on Partners in Health. We are on the air. Yes, we are. So we're going to go to our next uh, area for healthy aging this morning. And uh, let's just uh, go to stretching. For most of us, stretching is like hand washing. <laughs> Your delicates and flossing each time you brush, it's that thing you know you should do, but don't. So case in point, think back over the past week. How many minutes can you say you devoted to getting a really deep stretch? If the answer is none, it's time to reevaluate reevaluate your your weekly movement. Now, I uh, definitely believe in stretching. Stretching has been proven to help you to avoid certain serious injuries, and that is something that we, as we age, need to be doing more of, stretching. So the truth is supplementing some of your cardio or stretch routines with a good stretch could make your body feel younger and healthier and make your workouts more effective and sustainable in the long run. Why? Because stretching makes exercises like squats and deadlifts 
easier by improving your overall body mechanics. And this is not just according to your health and wellness consultant, Gail Dixon. This is according to Los Angeles personal trainer, Ashley Borden. Uh, it, it could even prevent, she says, damage from occurring in the first place. And that's why we should stretch. The aim of flexibility work is to be able to freely move your body through a wider range of motion, says Luke Worthington. And who is Luke Worthington? Worthington, head of training education at Third Space Health Clubs in London, says it reduces wear and tear on muscle tissue and connective tissue around the joints, which cuts your risk of injury. So as we age, the main exercise I recommend is walking. Walking is an exercise that is a low impact. You don't have to uh, be a fast runner or, I mean, fast walker. You don't have to walk briskly in order to take advantage of the health benefits of walking. Put one foot in front of the other, wear some comfortable shoes, uh, strap them up and make sure they're strapped co uh, correctly. Make sure you have the proper outdoor attire, and I also recommend walking outside as opposed to walking on a treadmill. It's safer. And also the other thing most people don't know is walking in nature, walking on the grass instead of walking on the sidewalk is better for your joints. So uh, if you can get to a really nice park and walk, that is something that's definitely going to help you. But before you walk, you should stretch. So, and then there's a psychological as well. Pain is your brain's perception of a threat to your body's status quo, according to Worthington. So when you stretch those tight hammies past your comfort zone, your body hits the ouch button as a protective alert that you should ease up. So that's what you need to do. I know many of us heard that no pain, no gain, but really that's not true. So this is super helpful. Obviously, you don't want to get injured, but when you preserve and hold the moderately painful new positions, you show your brains there's the, your your brain that there's nothing to worry about. So the pain will be less for the next time, says Worthington. In other words, the more you stretch, the easier you get. The easier it, it gets. So you ease up on that when it starts to be painful, but you you do stretch, but stre don't stretch past of the point to the point of pain. So stretching is important for healthy aging. Nutrition very important for healthy aging. And let's see. Next, we're going to move on to. Let's see. Let's take. Um, insomnia and depression. Let's let's see which one are we going to do next. Let's do uh, menopause. Okay, menopause and healthy aging. For women, that's one thing that most women go through as we age, menopause. And there are supplements that we can take to help with the menopause. There are natural supplements. Supplements are a good idea, but it's important to remember that they're just one part of a natural approach to menopause that also includes good nutrition, exercise. Some people believe in the bioidentical hormones. And so here are some of the things that you can take for if you're at that age, as we age, going through menopause. Fish oil has an overall anti-inflammatory effect throughout the body and can affect brain functioning. It may also have an indirect impact on hot flashes. Evening primrose oil is an omni uh, is an omega-6 fatty acid that some authorities believe have, may stimulate extra production of estrogen in women who have lost some of this hormone. Based on that assumption. It may help alleviate breast tenderness, mood swings, anxiety, irritability, headaches, and, and water retention. Then there's magnesium and calcium. They may uh, have a tonic effect on the nervous system. Lithonine is a tea derivative that may have a calming effect on the body without causing drowsiness. So those are some of the things that you can do to assist in the menopause as we age. So as we reflect and we move on, there are a couple of other areas we want to talk about. And let's see, next we're going to tackle possibly insomnia briefly because we're it's just about time for my, my partner and my co-host to join us. 
So I just want to say insomnia can be temporary, lasting only a few nights as 